My name is Loi van Kessel. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a university lecturer here at Leiden University, and I teach in literary studies and gender studies. What I think about when I think of the term uh, diversity and inclusion is that no two people are exactly alike. Everybody is different, and we need to celebrate those differences. We need to make spaces for, in which everybody can be who they want to be, who they are, and not feel that their identity uh, withholds them for, uh, from entering into a conversation, entering into to our academic environment. And throughout my research, I've been always interested in questions of making spaces for people who have been marginalized by society, who have been misunderstood, who have always been misrepresented. Um, and I've carried that over in my teaching. Um, diversity and inclusion are the core elements of my teaching practices in how communities represent themselves and identify themselves and how they use cultural and literary means in order to create spaces, carve out spaces for themselves and find ways in which they can communicate to each other, this is who we are, despite of how society wants us to be. Our students are much more knowledgeable than we often believe they are. They have their experiences, they have their own practices, and they have their own uh, views on life. And by listening to students and by listening to what they bring to the table, what they bring into the classroom, you learn how to make spaces for all those different voices, for all those different perspectives. What I think the faculty can do to improve visibility of queer students or to acknowledge the existence of queer students is to recognize that the student body doesn't necessarily look like the faculty. There's, I think, a very big discrepancy between who is a student at the university and who is doing the teaching. And that discrepancy often results in a lot of students not being heard, not being recognized, not being seen. And faculty can implement very small and very easy ways in order to start up the conversation with people who are different from them. I identify as a cis man. I think I'm readable as a cis man, but I still find it important to include my pronouns when I introduce myself to start up that conversation to start up the conversation that I recognize that not everybody is as easily legible, that not everybody shares the same pronouns as I do. And those little things can create a, an environment, a space where people uh, feel safe enough to talk about their different identities, to talk about the ways in which they relate to the bigger system. So the way in which queer struggles and queer identities intersect with other marginalized identities is the fact, the simple fact that these identities can never be separated from one another. I am not just a man, I am not just a white person, I'm not just a gay person. I am all these different identities at once. Everybody always occupies multiple social identities at the same time. And we need to acknowledge that. We need to take into account that people might have a different positionality than we think they have or that we assume they have, right? And so when we talk about the queer struggle, when we talk about anti-racism, when we talk about feminism, we need to think these struggles always in connection with one another. You cannot be anti-racist and at the same time be homophobic. You need to occupy both an anti-racist and an anti-homophobic position in order to really promote diversity and inclusion. I think in the past 10 to 15 years, queer visibility and queer presence has made such progress at the university. When I was studying, there wasn't yet language that discussed pronouns, that understood the difference between trans identities and cis identities. There simply wasn't that language that we could talk about, and people made fun of the LGBTQ pronoun, and now people just talk about LGBTQIA plus pronouns, everybody, or a lot of people introduce themselves with their pronouns. I think we have created a language and we've learned about languages 
that address all these identifications, languages that weren't as mainstream as they are today. My students today are much more advanced than I was when I was still a student.